welcome everyone to Glen County Stadium. We are set for an exciting homecoming game tonight for Glen Academy as they are hosting Grovetown. Hi everybody, I'm Anthony Serenana and I'm joined again by Coach Andre Clinch. Coach, in for an exciting matchup tonight, especially with the magic of homecoming. But when you look at both sides, definitely fierce weapons that can do a lot of damage if given the opportunity. Absolutely, Anthony, man. It's going to be a great game watching here today. And I can't wait to see um, what happens between these two teams. This is a game is about pride. You got two teams, one playing a homecoming game, and the other team got scheduled for homecoming. You don't want to lose your homecoming game, and you don't want to get scheduled for homecoming. So I can't wait to see what happens on the field tonight. Absolutely. And with uh, Glen Academy coming off the big 13-9 victory over South Eppington last week, they want to continue with the momentum and get that victory, as you said, right here at home in front of the homecoming crowd. And uh, – make the festivities for the weekend just more special. And for the Grovetown High School staff, they're looking to pick up a win here as last week they lost to Effingham County 28 to 14 as they're led by head coach Corey Evans as they are three and four overall, 0 and three in region play. And for the Red Terrors, three and four overall, one and two in region play. And tonight, everyone getting ready for this magical homecoming game. And we're glad again you could join us here on the Continental Sports Network. Coach, let's take a look at the Grovetown High School side. One gentleman that stands out the most is their quarterback, number two, Amari Clark. Seems to be the one-man wrecking crew for the for the uh, team there. Yeah, Amari Clark is a very special athlete. Uh, Six-foot quarterback, 183 pounds, dynamic dual-threat quarterback. He's really the heart of the team for Grovetown, and they go as he goes. On the flip side, you have multiple numbers that we could call on for Glen Academy that are weapons as well. Not only quarterback Tyler Devlin, but you also have David Prince, Greg Peacock. Coach, I'll let you keep going on if I missed a few names as well. Yeah, I wanna I wanna give a shout out to my man Hank. You know, Hank is the guy on the team. I think he's the guy who's gonna make the plays that you need to be made, you know? Does the tough work. He's a linebacker and a running back for these guys. Senior leadership, always being where he needs to be at the right time. During the week, during the podcast, Coach uh, Hidalgo said the three keys to the game, keep the Grovetown quarterback to a minimum. Do not allow him to get those explosive plays. Run the football, get explosion up front, and play great in special teams. And that's what they did last week in their win with uh, special teams, especially with one of the uh, punts going bad, and they ended up running it back for a touchdown. There you see the team captains in the middle getting ready for the coin toss and coach again it could always come down to such small things such as special teams yeah taking care of the ball um, and controlling the running game is going to be very important for both of these teams um, whoever controls the ball without turning it over and whoever can execute special teams is going to have the best chance to win this game so let's see where the ball is going to start off with here as the coin toss has been completed. So Glen Academy will elect to receive the ball to start things off. And the Warriors will get the ball in the second half. So it's homecoming 2022 for Glen Academy. We're excited. Kickoff is going to start shortly here. We are so glad you joined us here on the Continental Sports Network. Homecoming night kickoff. Don't go away. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us.
SEC head coach Peter Dalgo in his ninth season at the helm. And coach, uh, we've seen some talented men at the helm, uh, leading teams between the bricks here at Glen County Stadium. Yeah, I got to give a lot of love to Glen, Glen County and how they represent for these kids and put on for these kids. Uh, great coaching staffs, uh, obviously with Glen Academy with, with uh, Coach Rocky, and he's going to have his team ready to play. Again, they're looking to play flawless football, and there you see on the flip side, head coach Corey o Evans in his second year as a head coach. He had coached before on the team with the staff. He was the defensive coordinator. And again, the lovely light show here at Glen Academy Stadium gets everybody pumped up, whether you're the home team or the visiting team. Yeah, I like the spirit from Coach uh, Evans. I'm really excited to see what both teams come out with tonight, how well they play, how excited this game is for everybody. This is all about pride, like I said before. Nobody wants to lose this game. It's all about pride to see who comes out and executes the best. And definitely, if you're when you're watching the stream, send us a comment with your pride, whether you're the Warrior fan or a Red Terror. We'd love to hear from you. We'll definitely read those on the screens tonight. But again, we're glad you could join us here for Homecoming 2022 as kickoff gets ready to start here on the Continental Sports Network. So taking it back from about the one-yard line, returning the ball up deep. Wow, going past the 30-yard line to midfield. Check this out, Coach. What a run and a return by the Red Terrors, running it back for at least a 99-yard touchdown. If you cannot believe that. What a big way to start homecoming. That's how you start off homecoming for sure. Great vision, great execution, great blocking by the special teams. Like we said before the game started, special teams will make a big difference in this game. It was great to see that start for Glen Academy. So getting on the board early on, on the opening kickoff, Glen Academy takes a 6-0 lead. Take a look, Coach. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Gonna love to see it, man. You see the great vision here, great scene created by the blockers here. Everybody hand on the hat. And then it's just a race. If you can't beat you can't beat them, you know, it's too late for you. You see him pulling away here for an easy touchdown for the Glen Academy Red Terrors. Nice run there. That was by number one, Greg Peacock. Took a little while to get the identification because of the dark jerseys they're wearing tonight. And the kick is no good, so it remains six to zero with 11.48 to start things off. But if you uh, told Rocky Hidalgo of the Red Terrors this is how your team was going to start, he probably would have had a big smile on his face. So with the kick being wide, it's a 6-0 lead. We're going to take a quick break. Already the fireworks starting off here. 6-0 the lead for Glen Academy. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone. Yep, there you, that is true. 6-0 is the score. 11:48 on the clock here in the first quarter. The ball was kicked uh, in the end zone. We also have a flag. But, Coach, if you're uh, the Red Terror fans, not a better way to start off homecoming. Absolutely. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. Everybody's excited. Everybody's still getting in their seats. And before you even get seated down with your popcorn, there's already a touchdown for the Red Terrors. Got to love it. And the PA announcer definitely confirming it, a 99-yard return by Greg Peacock. It'll be first and 10 from the 20-yard line for Grovetown High. And Grovetown says, well, they did it that easy. Maybe it can be that easy for us as well. And to stop the run play and a nice trick maneuver there on the reverse and get some good yardage. That was number seven, Cardell Rudolph with the run. Yeah, slow development play, but great job there by Rudolph getting all the yards after the catch there. You see the handoff here to the running back here, and then uh, the handoff to the other side. 
Great job of execution and staying with the play for these guys. Good start for Grovetown. So that was enough to pick up the first down. And what they looked for was a holding call, though, against the Warriors. So a well-executed play gets called back for the holding call. So first and 17 for the Warriors. Not a good way to start things off here for them. Trailing 6-0 already. Mari Clark, the dangerous QB. We've heard a lot about him. And going to keep it on the ground game. That is Joseph Green. And look at the young man hurdle there. Wow. And get pushed out of bounds about the 40-yard line. Nice maneuver there. Nice run. Yeah, great run. Uh, I think it was uh, looks like a great run and a lot of missed tackles here. I think you can count at least five here. Here we go. Running back gets the ball on the outside, follows his blocker, and then gets out in open space. One missed tackle, two missed tackles, three missed tackles. It took the fifth die to get him down. You're going to have to tackle a lot better than that if you're going to win this game. Well, that was enough to pick up the first down. It was a first and 17, so he picked up 17 and a little more as well. But we were mentioning quarterback Amari Clark. Coach Hidalgo said we had to keep him from getting that explosive play. Going to run the ball up again. Up the middle there, looks like it was Gene again, number 13. Yeah. That's their strength. They have a uh, big Gene here who runs the ball really hard, and then they got Mari who can take the ball out of their hands, take off and throw it. So these two guys are very dangerous, for sure. Two-yard pickup for Gene. And so with the ball at the 41-yard line, We'll see what Coach Corey Evans draws up here and signs out to Clark for the next play here. Going to keep it on the ground again. Give it to Gene. No surprise then, I guess, Coach. Going to be Gene getting the ball. But a penalty flag is thrown on the play. And another holding call against... Coach Evans and his Grovetown Warriors staff, or crew, his team there. Yeah, that's going to be the problem for Grovetown. I mean, they have, they're have they a little bit smaller up front. These offensive linemen are going to try to do their best to keep uh, everything clean. So you got to stop grabbing jerseys, though, if you want to be executing properly. So good job by Glenn Academy, by attacking and making it hard for these guys. It's already, I believe it's our second penalty flag here on this drive. And that pushes them back. They were at a first and 17 after the first flag moved them back. They were able to pick it up, but now in a second and 17. Let's see if they can duplicate it here. Trailing six to zero. Second and 17, 10, 24 o'clock, winding down here in the opening quarter. Homecoming 2022. The pass from Clark to Jean, and the Red Terrors quickly on that one. That was a big tackle by number 24, Jaden Ellis. Yeah, you see the replay here. Quarterback drops back and just gets it right to his running back really quickly. And the quarterback gets off his block and makes a great open field tackle. So that'll bring up a third down situation. There's the young man making that tackle, number 24, Jaden Ellis. Brings in a third and 15. Have yet to see Clark throw the ball in the air. But in a third and 15 situation, this may be the time to do it. With Gene right next to his left side there. He fades back, has some time, has to scramble though, in the grasp and gets sacked by the Red Terrors. Great pursuit, great job by the Red Terrors there. Number 28, Hugh Edgy with the sack. All right. You see, you see Big John here fighting with a guy, keeping his hands clean, and then just makes a great play here. Quarterback had nowhere to go. And it looked like Mr. Edgy had some help from number 39, Will Fedison. And that brings up fourth down. But what a big defensive play by the Red Terrors to stop the drive. And this sets up a 
punt situation and another scoring opportunity here in the backfield for the, uh, the block punt, another block punt. We saw that last week. And again, Coach Hidalgo said, special teams, we have to play great on it and can't do any better than that, I think, right now, Coach. Oh, that's beautiful, man. We got a little bit of a high snap there. A great job by the uh, Glen Academy Red Terrace coming off the right side of getting that block. Here you see it. A little bit of a high snap and great execution by the block. Block punts are easy to get, but when you get them, they change the whole game. Giving the Red Terrors good field position to start their second drive here in the game. And going to go with the ground game, running up the middle. Almost doing a little leap up to try to get to the 20-yard line. That was number one, Greg Peacock, who brought back that 99-yard kickoff return. And I guess the dive worked, Coach. He picked up three yards on that one. Yeah, they want to stay ahead of the chains and give themselves up some short field as best they can here. Not turning the ball over here is very important. Taking care of the ball is really good. Ball at the 21-yard line. Go again to Mr. Peacock. Stays up and then takes a couple of defenders to bring him down. So Peacock, the workhorse, so far here in the opening quarter. Yeah, Peacock's a dynamic player. I mean, you want to get the ball in his hands as often as possible. So I see nothing wrong with giving him the ball a couple times starting to drive. And coach, no gain on the play, but if I'm looking at it right, he shows here a freshman on the screen there. So if that, what he uh, comes in at, got a lot of years ahead of him for him. So it brings up third and seven. Little misdirection play here. It looks like it works wow. perfectly. And look who makes the catch in the end zone. Mr. Peacock himself on the 21 yard play. Great play. Great execution. We've seen a couple games so far with Glen Academy, and their trick plays are just amazing. Great execution on the reverse pass. And the student body having a lot to cheer about already. 12-0 the score. Let's take a look, Coach. Yeah, you see the handoff to Peacock and the toss back. All the way back to Devlin, who makes a great easy throw to Peacock, who's left wide open for the touchdown. Great job by the Red Tears there. Great execution. They attempt for the two-point conversion. Looks like they're unsuccessful. But as you mentioned, the play started with quarterback Devlin, ended with Devlin going to Peacock for the score. And so with that, we're up 12 to zero for Glen Academy on homecoming 2022. Don't go away. Great football action here on CSN. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced <for> veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back. There you see head coach Rocky Hidalgo, his team leading 12 to zero. And so far executing well on special teams, a 99 yard return on the opening kickoff. And then a block punt sets them up for good field position to start their second drive. And it leads to a 21 yard touchdown pass from quarterback Devlin to Peacock. And there it is, a 12-0 ball game. Yeah. I I would like to get like a copy of Coach Adago's playbook. I think this guy probably has like a whole section of trick plays. I mean, I've seen like at least six since I've been watching any games they've been doing. Great execution by the young kids, but great dial up by the coach. I'll tell you one thing, the last time I remember seeing some amazing 
plays like that drawn up was in a, 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 a one edition of Madden Football. So maybe Coach can uh, give Madden Football some of those plays to add for all of us to play and uh, run some of those and, and have some big uh, scoring games so far with a 12-0 lead. So Amari Clark, the quarterback, with the keeper. And look at the Red Terror defense in there to stop the play. Number 12, Gabe Ballant. But there is a flag on the play, so we'll see. The last uh, drive for the Warriors, it was called against them. And again, it's called against them as well. Yeah, these young guys are just, you know, doing the best they can. And, you know, whenever they let somebody get by them, they grab the jerseys. The refs got to call it every time. Great pursuit by the Terrors, though, and great containment of the quarterback there on that play. So Glenn Academy doing it on offense, special teams, and putting the pressure on defense. Head coach Corey Evans seeing his team down 12-0 to already. Going to want to turn things around here. We mentioned they will get the ball back in the second half. But still plenty of football for them to come back. Again, we've we heard a lot about Quarterback Amari Clark, also Joseph Jean. So we'll see when they can start up the uh, well machine there. Here we go. This could possibly be one of those big plays as the pass is to Cardell Rudolph. That's a great play, getting the ball out to a playmaker here. You see the quarterback just drop back and get the ball out as fast as possible. Good blocking on the edge and then just execution after that. From first and 20 to second and two, that's a great play there by Grovetown. 6.56, the clock stopped as the play went out of bounds. Let's see what Amari Clark and the Warriors are able to do here. And we have whistles here and a flag. Let's see if someone jumped off sides. And he was against Glenn Academy, so that helped him out. So it brings up a new set of downs, first and 10. Grovetown comes in after a 28-14 loss last week against Effingham County. And for coach Rocky Hidalgo and his Red Terrors team, they come in with after a hard fought victory, 13 to nine. Quarterback keeper Clark picks up a few yards. Yeah, nice design run there just to get the quarterback involved in the game. When you got a weapon like that, you got to give him as many carries as possible without getting him hurt, of course. And there's the young man you mentioned early on, Coach, Hank Noonan. He make the tackle on that play. That's right, man. I'm a big fan of Hank Noonan. I mean, he's one of my favorite players within Academy. Always making the right play at the right time. So 12 to 0 is the score. Glenn Academy. Fired off real quick with an opening 99-yard kickoff return. Clark has to scramble, finds a way up the middle, and the loose ball picked up by the Glen Academy Red Terrors, and they will take over here on that mistake play as the ball popped loose. And you can see the not-so-happiness there of Amari Clark, the quarterback. Yeah, you love to see his teammate coming on to help him out there and give him a little love and encourage him. But right now, what's happening is Lynn Academy has all the momentum. You see what's happening here? He jumps up in the pocket here and takes off. Doesn't really keep both hands on the ball. And there's the punch out there by another Lynn Academy player there. And uh, easy turnover there. Lynn Academy's making all the right plays at all the right times. So first and 10 on the Warrior side of the field here. And here's Glenn Academy again with that misdirection of the ball. And I believe that's Devlin with the ball still. Takes a hit, stays standing, and it takes two defenders to take him out of bounds. And that was number three, quarterback Tyler Devlin. Yeah, that's a great play, great play by Devlin. That was a double reverse fake. It's supposed to be a pass there. You see him here, fake the handoff here, fake the reverse on the backside, looks for the pass and it's not there, and then he just makes a play with his legs there. Great play by the quarterback. 
not only if you're a spectator and you look down just for a minute, you look up, you might not know where that football is. Same thing for the announcer here. You look down at your paper, you look up, you don't know where that ball might end up going. So Greg Peacock picks up the yardage there. There's the young man number one. And so far the workhorse for Glen Academy. So enough to pick up the first down, and there's head coach Rocky Hidalgo. Mention, coach, love to see that playbook of his. Go with the run play. Keep going where it goes. Keep working. Greg Peacock picks up some good yardage as well. A yeah, great job by Peacock there, hitting the hole and being very explosive coming out of here. Here's a replay here. He gets the ball here. As soon as he sees the hole, puts his foot in the ground, and then just takes off. Great play. That was an 11-yard game, an 11-yard gain for the young man, Greg Peacock. 99 yards already when he opened up to get that kickoff return. So he's going he's gonna to have a nice uh, workout on the legs tonight. Yeah, so with Greg has a, uh, Greg has a, lot, of, um, a lot of heart. He's a tough runner with great instincts. Really the heart of this team. Wearing number one. So far, the number one weapon here for Glen Academy in this 12-0 lead. 4.51 remaining, still the opening quarter. Feels like we should already be at a, getting close to halftime after all the action we've seen. And another few pickup, a uh, little few yards there by Peacock. And they just keep, continue to keep going to Peacock, number one. And it just... Keeps being a successful move as he just picks up the yards needed. Yeah, but if you got a weapon like that, why not feed him as often as possible? I mean, he's consistent and a hard worker. That's the kind of guy you want on your team. So didn't pick up any yards on that run play. But second and 10. And looks a little like Glenn Academy having a little challenge in trying to run the next play. So they're just going to call a timeout and uh, go over to the coaching staff so that way they can get the next play drafted up there with head coach Peter Hidalgo and his, and his Red, T Red Terror team. Let's take a look at some of your comments already filtering in here. Go Terrors. And what a way to start off. Yeah, absolutely. And speed from TJ Thompson. <laughs> Oh, nice. So, Glen Academy with a 12-0 lead. And all those comments were exactly right. All this action, speed. Homecoming 2022. And I know, Coach, we have some of Glen Academy's finest graduates on our production team tonight. So, should should be entertaining for them to see their high school uh, on top here, 12-0. I think I might even heard the announcer mention that there was a class of 62 in the in the house. Wow. Yeah, we got a. So it looks like. Yeah, we got a guy who didn't have an equipment issue there. Probably a mouthpiece or an arm guard, not really properly set up. So he's going to come out of the game right now for one play, hopefully. So 12-0 the score, 409 opening quarter. Glad you could join us here on the Continental Sports Network. We have seen a good one already. Quarterback on the keeper, running the ball, just shy of the 15. Brings yeah, a nice. third down situation. Yeah, nice guy. We had a nice speed option here for Devlin, and he uh, uh, it intends on faking the hand a uh, pitch there to take it himself. Great play there, open field tackle by number 12. That was Zayden Gunn, the senior, making the stop. And so at 336, it's third and five. Ball spotted at the 16-yard line. And Glenn Academy on their third possession of the game. The first two landed them in the end zone. 
quarterback keeper, swings to the left side, short little pass, and look at that coach, in the end zone for the touchdown. There he is, yeah. My favorite player on Glen Academy's team, Mr. Hank Noonan, for the touchdown. It's a great a, play call and great execution. A 16-yard touchdown play. So Glen Academy was unable to make the extra point tip. But take a look at the run here, Coach, and the, and the play. Yeah, this is a traditional power pass, but when he sold the run, he opened it wide open there for Hank Noonan, and he made an easy catch and score. Great execution by the, the Terrors there. So this time the PAT is good. So it's a 19-0 ball game, Coach. They've had possession three times, and three times they've landed in the end zone. So we're going to take a quick break. 19-0 is our score. You're watching Homecoming here on CSN. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's so funny? High quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone. 19 to 0 is the score. Kicker Cody Arnold legged that one into the end zone, so it'll come back to the 20 yard line, and that's where the Warriors will start. And, Coach, you said it early on. What a way to start off homecoming for the Red Terrors. That is correct. I mean, you can't ask for anything better. You've played this entire half on one side of the field where only you can score. That's what you want to do when you're uh, imposing your will on the other team. Going to go ahead and go with the snap and the quarterback keeper, but Glenn Academy right there to make the stop. So we're seeing a tough Glenn Academy team on offense, defense, and special teams. Yeah, that's leads correct. Leads them to a 19-0 lead. That's correct, Anthony. They're playing great in all three phases of the game. Uh, special teams, offense, and defense, and that's what you want to do. So it was a pickup of four yards, second and six. And as you mentioned, Coach, it's been a half football field type of game for Glen Academy. Clark putting on some moves to run, but look at him fire, push his way forward. He needed six yards. Let's see where they put the ball on the placement on the, on the run there. Yeah, quarterback just... Decide he was already going to run before he got the ball, so he got as much as he could, and that's all you can really do. But the Terrors did a great job of pursuit and making sure that he is not going to be the guy to beat us. So, just short of the first down marker, two yards, third and two from their own 28. Does Clark keep the ball this time? Does he give it to Gene? He keeps it himself and he barrels forward. Looks like he has enough for the first down. Yeah, when you're playing the way you're playing, you want to make sure you can get first downs and try to flip the field. Here it is, third and two is already going to be a quarterback run as soon as he catches the ball. Design a quarterback run and just let a playmaker go make a play here and get you a first down. And we definitely know the fire is burning in Mr. Clark when they had that fumble turnover on the sidelines. You could definitely see the passion that he was frustrated with that as they were moving along nicely on that drive. And here we see a throw up in the air, but unable to make the catch as the pass was thrown a little too further ahead. That was for number eight, Marcus Meinhardt. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, they, they haven't been across the 50-yard line this game, so making a one-on-one -on -one play there for number eight, not a bad idea, just a little bit overthrown. Here you see the throw again. 
A little bit overthrown here. The receiver didn't really have enough space to make that play. So that'll bring it second and 10. And we're looking off to the sideline there to get the next play drawn up here. And again, go to the air, throw the pass, almost picked off, but knocked down by Glen Academy. Great defense there. Great defense there by the Terrace. Getting the high fives here is Gavin Wells, the junior. Looks like he's the one that got the hand in on the play to knock the pass down, but could have been a dangerous with it. Could have been a turnover. Yeah, easy pass breaker, though. I mean, he knew where the ball was going the whole time. Didn't get there too early. Right on time. Great play. So brings up third and ten. Clark talking to Joseph Jean there. He's off to his left side there. We got whistles. And it looks like we have a penalty flag, and that's going to be a de delay a game, which is going to go against the Warriors. So, Coach, that uh, just doesn't do well for them on this drive. Yeah, the penalties in the first half have really, actually the first quarter, have really hurt this team, and they got to get um, on the right page. So that brings a third and 15. Clark fades back, has to scramble. And slips mm. at the 30-yard line. And again, the frustration you can see in his body language is not happy. Yeah, you see, you see the uh, pocket collapse and then he tries to get outside and then just looks like some indecision here. He wants to throw the ball, wants to run the ball, can't make up his mind and slips. And that's all she wrote. So once again, another drive ends unfortunately for the Warriors with that trip up on the quarterback Clark fourth and 13 back at their own 31 yard line this time the kick gets off in time has some good hang time and the Glen Academy Will allow them to allow the Warriors to just down the ball, and that looks like they'll start off probably still with some decent uh, field position here to start off the next drive. Yeah, it's decent field position, but it's the worst field position they've had all game. So now they got to put together a full drive here. So 19 to zero is the score. So far, we've seen Glen Academy, and each of those possessions end up in the end zone. Let's see if they can continue that trend with 10 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Going to run the ball up the middle. Nice run. And keep moving forward. Leave with the forward momentum. Should have gotten to the 40-yard line. But we'll uh, take a look and see when we come back in the second quarter with Glen Academy up 19-0. It's homecoming here on CSN. Don't go away. We'll be right back. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwiches. Welcome back, everyone. It's the second quarter. Start things off with Glen Academy at their own 40-yard line. 19-0 is the score. Glad you could join us here on CSN. I'm Anthony Saranon along with head coach Andre Clinch. Coach, we're seeing a good one by the Ter Red Terrors here tonight. 
Absolutely. I think that the Red Terrors are um, ready to play. I think the coach, the dog, has these guys ready, locked in, executing properly. They had a great week of practice, and they came ready to play tonight. Love what I'm seeing from the Red Terrors. Five-yard pickup by Glen Academy as Hank Noonan with the run. So first and ten for Glen Academy. And continue the run up the middle. Just shy of the 50-yard line. And that was Hank Noonan again. So it worked out well for Hank the first time. Why not go back to good old number seven again? Lucky number seven. Yeah, Hank's a hard runner, man. Great, great football guy. Everybody needs a guy like this on your team. He's going to do the dirty work and uh, not really need much praise. He's going to do a good job every time. Second and seven. Just shy of midfield. And this time looks like they went with Peacock number one, Greg Peacock. Some really lucky numbers there, Coach. Number one and number seven. Yeah, number one and number seven are definitely the lucky guys on this team. They are the guys who are going to lead this team to victory night in and night out. Glenn Academy opened things up big. 99-yard kickoff return by Greg Peacock. And it's just been Glen Academy, one score after another. Quarterback Tyler Devlin back up, and it looks like we have whistles. Could be a delay a game. We saw it earlier on in the uh, first quarter. I think it's a timeout here. Timeout call by Glen. Yep, another timeout call by Glen Academy. So maybe they're looking over to going over the next play. Yeah, coach, coach wanted to do a hard count here and get an offsides. Uh, they didn't jump offsides, so he wanted to call a timeout to make sure he got the right play in, and uh, everybody was ready to go here. So great job by Coach Adago again, just running a great game uh, and putting the guys in a good position to make plays. As we mentioned earlier on, Coach Rocky Hidalgo in his ninth year as the head coach for Glen Academy. And there's quarterback Tyler Devlin, the quarterback senior. And we'll see how they draw this next play up. And again, when we say draw, there's definitely some interesting plays in that book from head coach Rocky Hidalgo. Who's, we've been uh, privy to see a few of them tonight. Yeah, I've seen trick plays. I've seen quarterback powers. I've seen waggles. I've seen fakes. I've seen handoffs. Very creative play caller here. So third and four, quarterback keeper Devlin with the throw up the middle and incomplete. We'll bring up fourth yeah. down. Just looks like he just uh, Prince just didn't couldn't bring it in there. Pass was intended for number two, David Prince. And so brings up fourth and four. Yeah, you see here, Prince is uh, wide open, trying to bring it in there, but just didn't look it all the way in. Just didn't probably looking at the safety coming over. Great play call, great execution. Almost a great play. A snap, fake, and it looks like they're going to go for it, Ooh. and they picked up the first down if it uh, stays there. And that was... Number 20, 22 for Glen Academy. That's Devontae Lang. Yeah, here's a fake punt here. He's going to direct snap here to the running back, give him a chance to make a play, get the five yards here, get the first down. Great execution and the, the fake by the punter, jumping up and down like he almost missed the ball. Great job. Always got to be on your toes when you play in the Glen Academy Red Terrors. Fake punts. I was going to ask. Is double passes. Everything's, everything's on the table. I was going to ask, does uh, Glen Academy have a good drama class? Because that uh, kicker sure sold it really well. Um, when I was in school, they did actually have a great drama department. So <laughs> Maybe Coach Hidalgo says, hey, guys, we're going to take a little drama this week, learn how to sell some of these plays. And so the run play stops, but we have a player on the ground for Glen Academy. He's taking some time to get up. So we're going to take a quick break, 19-0. to 0. 
sort things out and hopefully give you an update here with Glen Academy in the lead, 19 to zero. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. So Hank Noonan was the player that came off the field slowly. Hopefully, Coach, we'll see him back in action here. But continuing the action, Glenn Academy with the run and getting pushed out of bounds about the 25-yard line for Mr. Greg Peacock, number one. Yeah, easy to go to number one when you when number seven goes out of the game. Uh, like to see how much yards they can get there. And now it's third down, and the Terriers have the ball, so I don't know what I'm about to see next. Third and four. Let's see what Coach Rocky Hidalgo draws up for his staff here. Devlin with the handoff, barreling up Ooh. the middle, get the run up the middle. Looks like there was enough for the first down. And that was, again, number one, Greg Peacock. Yeah, Peacock just makes a play here. You see him getting vertical, and then the jump over the top to get that five yards. So with the leap and bounds by Greg Peacock, good enough for the first down, new set of downs, first and 10. 8.48 remaining here in the first half. And it looks like Mr. Hank Noonan is back in the ball game. So hopefully it might have been just something real minor where he had to stretch it out and give the ball back to him here in the first play. Yeah, even though they didn't get any yards there, I mean, it's great to see the kid back in the game. Um, like I said before, man, this guy is the Swiss Army knife for this team. He will block, he will play tight end, he'll play running back, he'll play linebacker. Great athlete. And on that play was actually a loss of two yards, so second and 12. And he comes out of the ball game to replace him was number 24, Jaden Ellis. Looks like they give maybe the ball to Ellis there. No, they give it to Mr. Peacock, who gets a big run to the sidelines and out of bounds. We'll see where they spot this one at. Yeah, you see the jet motion and then the quick handoff there to uh, Mr. Peacock. He gets outside as much as he can and then gets up the field as much as he can. Great job, great execution, great patience by Peacock. Well, the run is pretty much canceled out after a holding call against the Red Terrors. So that will push them back. Yeah, that's the toughest thing about a stretch uh, sweep like that, a jet sweep. Everybody's trying to reach outside, and sometimes somebody reaches and grabs a jersey there. But still, they've had the ball here for like three minutes in this drive. Great job by the Terrace taking the clock all the way down here. Ball's moved back to the 43-yard line, second and 20. See how quarterback Tyler Devlin handles the play here. And he's going to fade back, scramble out on the run with the throw up, and it's picked off by the Warriors at the 30-yard line. He turned it back to the 40, just shy of the 40, and that was picked off by number 23 for the Warriors, A.J. Glasper. And the celebration for the Warriors as they are able to get a turnover here. All right, he got a, a waggle here by the quarterback rolling out to his right. 
He underthrows the receiver and never sees the safety. Just waiting on him here. Uh, cover three there, just waiting for him. And then a great return also. So good job, way to change the momentum up there by Grotown. That's what you want to see. A pickoff for 23 yards by number 23, A.J. Glasper. So the Warriors get an opportunity here to see if they can capitalize and check out the run here to the right side by quarterback Amari Clark. That's the first time this game that Amari got outside and made a great run there. The academy have had so, him contain most of the game, but that was the one time that I see him get outside there. Great play by the quarterback. You know, Mr. Clark has that fire. He had the uh, accidental fall and then the other turnover they had, so he really wants to keep possession on this one and put the exclamation mark on the turnover. His team in intercepted the ball against Glen Academy. Hand off, run up the middle. Number 13, Gene Joseph Jean. Yeah, it's good to see him go back to Jean there, but great job by the Glen Academy in the pursuit there, making sure he didn't get any extra yards. Gene, senior, six foot one, 210 pounds. Here's quarter or head coach Corey Evans. Mentioned his team with the 28 14 loss last week against Effingham County. Trying to pick up their first region action game victory here. Clark throwing it up in the air, going up the middle, and it's caught touchdown. by his receiver in for the touchdown. Dorico Harper makes the catch. Mr. Harper with the catch while he was heavily guarded and goes in for the touchdown. 19 to 6 the score. Oh, yeah. 622 remaining. Here's the replay, coach. Yeah, so yeah, here's the replay. Quarterback drops up, steps up into the pocket, throws a great pass here, and just a great catch here. Through traffic, and then an easy run into the end zone. That's the first time they made it across the 50 yard line. And the first time they had an opportunity to go deep for a touchdown and well executed by both the quarterback and the receiver on that play. And I'm wondering, looking at that replay, if he even caught it maybe just with one arm, one hand. I think the other one might have been tied up with the defender. Either way, it's a 19-7 ball game with 6.22 remaining. Great action tonight, homecoming night. Don't go away, we'll be right back here on CSN. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams. Full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform. Because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. And welcome back, everyone. There you see number 20, Tariko Harper, making the catch for the touchdown to put the exclamation point on the turnover. It took him three plays, 62 yards. 19 to seven is the score. Glad you could join us here on CSN, homecoming game night for Glen Academy. And the uh, Red Terrors with the return, taking it back to 40, to the 45, 50 coach, this is a wide open field. Love it. Greg Peacock once again, we'll have to see where he made the catch on that one. Definitely was not a 99er, but a long run indeed though, to put to his collection of the first one. Have a game, Peacock, have a game. Here's a return. We got another middle return set up, and then, again, great job by the Terrors of kicking off guys, getting another man, and Peacock with a great run. Great run again. I don't know if I keep the ball to him anymore this rest of this game. Great play. 
25-7 is the score. The kick is up and good. So a 26-7 ball game. Let's look at this again, Coach. Yeah, once again, he's out in the open field, and then it's just speed, speed, speed. Great job by Peacock. I believe this man can make a highlight tape off of this one game alone. What a game. And look at the young man. We said he had a 99-yard one to open up the kickoff. And with this one here, wasn't 99, but it was it was pretty good long, uh, run there. And it puts his team up 26-7. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've only seen this game this week, but I'm pretty sure he's got a good chance to win player of the week. I would agree with you on that man. one. And the student body, you can hear them in the uh, crowd there. They're just lots to cheer about tonight with a 26-7 to ball game. And homecoming festivities will be at halftime, so it just makes the uh, halftime show just even that much more enjoyable. So Glen Academy didn't need one play, just the one kickoff return, and that was it. The ball goes in the end zone. Start things off at the 20-yard line for the Warriors. Thank you to the following athletic corps And I don't know, Coach, I think uh, halftime, I'm going to need to take a little break. I'm exhausted with all the action going on so far. I don't know if I can take a break. I'm too excited. I've been watching some <laughs> amazing football by number one from Glen Academy. And we were expecting fireworks for homecoming, but wow, we are really getting a good show tonight. So Glenn Academy in the lead, 26 to seven. The Warriors start with their own 20. And on the quarterback keeper, picking up a few yards on the play. That was number two, Amari Clark, the quarterback. And he was able to draw a few yards and drag a few players with him with it. So he picked up one yard on the play. Or check that. They're calling it second and ten, so no gain. Ball spotted still at the 20-yard line. Glad you could join us for tonight's broadcast. I'm Anthony Serenano with Coach Andre Clinch for a big homecoming game tonight, and we're seeing a great one, a spectacular one. To the left of Amari Clark is running back Joseph Jean. Now he's going to switch sides now. And we got a whistle. Yeah, it's probably delay a game there. Delay penalty on the Warriors. And I believe we saw one earlier on in the uh, game as well. But the Warriors have really been plagued by the yellow flag tonight. Yeah, a lot of flags thrown here uh, against the Warriors. But the quarterback's got to know what to do. You see the referee trying to tell him. There's a referee holding his hand up to let him know when there's 10 seconds left on the clock. And he's just missing the guy paying attention to the sideline more than he's paying attention to the referee in the middle of the field. So with five minutes remaining, clock winding down here in the first half. Let's see what quarterback Clark does here. A little short pass. And check that out, coach. Glenn Academy right there for loss of yardage on the play. And looks like Glen Academy's having a player coming up slow. That was number eight, Ryan Young. Yeah, Young made a great play, but looks like he might have a cramp there. Fell right to the ground right away. Yeah, we were talking about the weather early on when like we uh, started. The sun was out, looked nice, and uh, but cool temperatures though. So maybe with the evening coming in, it just. Gets the bustles to tighten up even more. Yeah. When you play football out here, you got to hydrate before the game. Once you get to the game, it's too late. So hopefully these young men are all hydrated and we can uh, not see too many injuries tonight. So with 439, the clock stopped. So it looks like the young man is okay. Everyone's going to come back out on the field. And the Glen Academy cheer squad has plenty to cheer about tonight. So does the student body section. As the stands are filled tonight with pride of red. Third and 18 for the Warriors. Again, after that one uh, 
turnover. They they had good field position, but other than that, been pretty bad in on there uh, for them on when they start their possessions. And look at that, coach. Pick off by Glenn Academy to take it to the one yard line. And look at the celebration by the young man, number 24, Jaden Ellis, who made the the, the catch there. And a little bling, too. Oh, yeah, you got to earn that turnover chain. Here's the drop back. A little bit of pressure on the quarterback's face, and he just misses his guy. Doesn't even see the, the guy in coverage there. And after that, it's just showtime. Make a play. Get as much as you can there. So Mr. Ellis returned the ball 28 yards. First and goal from the two-yard line. And Glenn Academy looking to capitalize and check that out. That wall to push forward to get the touchdown on the quarterback keeper by Mr. Tyler Devlin. Great play by Devlin and the offensive line there. Great call by the coach. Old-fashioned wedge play. And if you're head coach Rocky Hidalgo, you have to be pleased with the way your team is performing. Every opportunity that the Warriors are providing for Glen Academy to score, the Red Terrors are taking full advantage of it and getting on the board. 32 to seven is the score. The extra point attempt is up, splits the uprights, 33 to seven. And the Glen Academy team just really rolling on all cylinders when it comes to offense, defense, and special teams. So we're going to take a quick break with 4.09 remaining. Homecoming night. Don't go away. We'll be right back. as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's so funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone. 33 to 7 is the score. Glenn Academy putting on a, a clinic, a show, whatever you want to use this term, but they are really showing us how it's done in offense, defense, and special teams, coach. Oh yeah, this is a this is a clinic. Um, I gotta give all the players all the credit and the coaching staff for Glenn Academy. This is a very well called game and executed game by the Terrors over here. So with 4.09 remaining in the first half here, the Warriors will receive the ball back in the second half. Glenn Academy opened up the game, and there's a few yards to be picked up. But in that opening kickoff to Glenn Academy, that's when Mr. Greg Peacock, number one, went 99 yards to get this game started. All right, here's the play here by none other than Hank Newton here. Steps right up in the pocket and makes a great play, great tackle, open field, one-on-one. -on -one. So a pickup of three on the run play. Good to see Hank Noonan back in the game. We saw him come up slowly, take a couple of plays off, but he's back in and quarterback Clark fades back, throws up the middle, Ooh. and again picked off by Glenn Academy. He's on the run to get that chain. <laughs> that is Marcus Meinhardt, number eight. Oh, I'm sorry, check that. Number eight, Ryan Young. There's the bling, coach. <laughs> oh, yeah, love to see it. Love to see it. So the ball is to be spotted at the Warriors 46. Here it is, coach, the interception. Oh, yeah, safety's just sitting in the middle of the field, ready to make a play. Jumps on that pass, and I mean, he has every right to the ball, just like the receiver. You want to see guys like that making plays. Look at the excitement after that. Love to see it. So that brings back on the offense. 
Devlin with the little pitch. And going to the left side, Mr. Peacock to the races. Takes the sideline route and gets pushed out of bounds just before the 20-yard line. So let's uh, keep on Mr. Peacock here. That's right. That's right. Love to see that. Yes, sir. Peacock from the Pirates. We salute you. That's correct. Love to see the. <laughs> love to see that. Love to see the Pirates giving the, all the terrors his love. And uh, Peacock's having a game. Nice face. Right, the Pirates there have a bye week this week. So 33 to 7 the score and Glen Academy looking to add more and give the ball again to Mr. Peacock. But number 13, Joseph Jean, right there to make the stop. Yes, yeah, he's a little winded there. You see he's been doing a little bit of everything. Nice to see he's human. The guy's been doing it all tonight. So a loss of a yard, second and 11. A little over two minutes remaining here in the first half. Glenn Academy's offense has just been amazing, pulling off plays left and right. And Devlin with the run. Picks up a yard or two. And once again, the big tackle by Zayden Gunn, the senior, six foot zero. So no gain on the yeah. play, stays sec third and 11. Yeah, it was the first third and long I think I've seen for the Terrors all game. Devlin with the pass, nice complete. Play. And in the end zone for the touchdown, complete to David Prince. And as you said, Coach, we haven't seen many third and longs, but they go in for the touchdown. And everything's and another, clicking, everything's clicking. Another capitalization on another turnover. So Glenn Academy and Coach Hidalgo making you pay for yeah. those mistakes. It's the one-on-one -on -one slant. Great execution, great timing by the receiver and the quarterback. Easy touchdown. Love to see it. And he gave you a little gritty afterwards. Love to see that swag. The extra point kick is good. So it's a 40 to seven game. Homecoming 20 people will be right back. Don't go away here on PSN. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. And welcome back, everyone. A 40-7 ball game. It was a 47-yard pass on this last one from Devlin to Prince. And for homecoming, whether you're a fan at the stadium, a fan at home, or an alum inside our production truck, got to be happy with the score. And Coach, I don't know what else we can say about this Glen Academy team. They're just playing phenomenal tonight. This is easily the best game I've seen from these guys all year. I mean, they've gotten better all year. Great coaching staff. Uh, a lot of great kids out here. And I love to see Glen, Glen County representing this way. And this is how you play your homecoming game complete domination also again earlier on we had heard class of 62 in the house so they're seeing a good ball game as well tonight with the run mr clark, clark on the comes up just shy of the 30 yard line but another flag on the field and coach let's see problem. if it's going to go against them yeah let's see sounds like the officials totally. waiting from for, uh, for the call from New York there. He had his earpiece. <laughs> yeah. 
This is another holding call there. I mean, you know, anytime you see a guy get out on the edge, these linemen don't want to move their feet sometimes, and they get a little handsy, handsy there. So, unfortunately, these guys have been going backwards all night with these penalties. Not to, not to the happiness here for Coach Corey Evans. That pushes them back to about the 10 yard line. First and 21. Adams, Amari Clark checked that with the pass and it's completed. He continuing the run. Nice grab and run by number eight, Marcus Meinhardt, but he is coming up slow on that play there. Yeah, he, he like a pretty rough fall for him there. I don't know if he pulled something or not. But great play. You see the quarterback here drop back, throw a great ball to the receiver, and he just beat the guy. You know, press man in that situation is probably not the best idea. But um, great job by the receiver and the quarterback again with their time and making a great play. Not sure if maybe it was during the tackle when he came down, but yeah, it looked didn't like really say anything on the run, yeah. Yeah, it was that, it's definitely on the tackle there. I think he just fell a little awkwardly, trying to stiff arm the guy and fell and probably hurt somewhere at lower extremity. But great play, great play by the receiver here. Let's take a look at some of your social media comments here. Terrors on a roll today, that's right. And the defense is handling business, absolutely. We appreciate your comments, keep them coming in. Love to hear from you. As Glen Academy leading 40 to seven, 129 remaining here in the second quarter. Hopefully the player is okay there. They did take him off the field. Another pass play up the middle, mm. jumped up and caught and into the end zone by Joseph Jean. And just like that, the Warriors get themselves on the board. Yeah, it looked a little easy there. I mean, easy drop back, easy drop back here. Got a guy going in a, across the screen there with a post and just, he went up and just took it from the guy. Easy play for number 12. Great play, great drive. So 40 to 13 coming in for the extra point attempt with 122 remaining. Looks like it's wide right. So it remains 40 to 13. And we're gonna take a quick break with Glen Academy with the big lead here on homecoming night 2022 here on the CSN Sports Network. Don't go away, we'll be right back. the game but you don't love the pain from the moment an injury sidelines you turn to the experts at summit sports medicine and orthopedic surgery our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely to play your best you need to work with the best visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment And welcome back everyone, 40 to 13 is our score. The Warriors with the quick touchdown. The PAT was wide right. And coach Rocky Hidalgo and his squad will take the field for offense here as the kickoff the ball spotted at the 29 yard line. There's head coach Rocky Hidalgo in his ninth season. Had a chance to see some amazing plays early on. And that was just the first half. So we still have a whole second half to go, Coach, to see what Coach Hidalgo has in store for us.
Quarterback Tyler Devlin with the handoff. Shooting right up the middle, Greg Peacock, the workhorse. He had left earlier on with a little bit of a, looked like maybe a cramp or something, but good to see him back in here. I, I just think the guy's tired. I mean, he's been doing a lot today. Again, the pass to number one. Good blocking, gets past the 40. With the big hit though, number 13, Joseph Jean, but not until he got the first down by Peacock. So it'll be a first and 10 with under a minute remaining. Let's see the hurry up offense. See if it gets them at least to score a field goal or if they're able to get into the end zone. Pass is incomplete. Stops the clock with 43 seconds remaining. Yeah, they try, yeah, they try, try to throw a screen to Prince there and missed the block there, but that's good. Incomplete means the clock's not running. So let's see how they run this two minute offense. And I guess, Coach, if there's one good thing about homecoming night, it's extended and it gives Mr. Uh, Peacock a little more time to, to take a little break. Yeah, get that man some oxygen. So 43 seconds remaining. Second and 10. Devlin back. Scrambles around, looking for someone. Doesn't find it, and he's just going to go right to the left side for a short pass. And that's to uh, our, our guy there, Coach, there. To Mr. Hugh Reggie. And timeout to stop the clock. So it looks like Glen Academy is eyeing the end zone. Going here into halftime. That's, a, so, that's, a, that's actually a pretty good play there by the quarterback there. He didn't really have anything he had what he wanted and almost like Josh Allen just pitched the ball out there and just got it to his guy any way he could. Yeah, that was a short pass to number 28, Hugh Edgy. The senior 6-2. And coach Adalgo drawing up here with just 29 seconds remaining, third and three. And there's the workhorse of the team, number one, Greg Peacock. And he's gonna go under the tent there to get a little bit of a breather. He deserved it, I think he earned it for sure. Mentioned Coach Hidalgo said last week was a hard fought win, 13 to nine over South Effingham. And tonight with a 40-13 lead, let's see what they decide to go with. Going to stay with the run play. That was the number 23, DJ Baldwin, the sophomore. So with 14 seconds, fourth and three. Looks like they're just going to let that clock wind down here. They might call a timeout here. And they might have the time expired? Let's see. I Hold think on one call second. A timeout here. Yeah, I think I might have heard a whistle too before time actually expired, so we'll see. Yeah, I think I think the idea was to run the clock all the way down to one or two seconds there and then throw a Hail Mary on the last play. So Glenn Academy. Oh, check that. Grovetown called the timeout. I guess I was wrong. Grovetown thinks they can make a play here with three seconds left in the game. And a half, at least. Very interesting. Yes, indeed. So, we have a timeout on our hands. 40 to 13, the score. Again, don't go uh, too far away for halftime for all the fun during homecoming. And Coach Rocky Hidalgo going to halftime, leading 14 to 13, unless they can. Pull something off here with three seconds remaining. On the flip side, Coach Corey Evans calling the timeout. Very interesting coaching strategy there. Yeah, I think they're going to run this three seconds off and just kneel it. Now they're going to run the ball, and yeah. sliding is the quarterback to end their drive, and that'll end the first half. But, Coach, what a first half we've seen here in this homecoming game. Incredible first half, great execution. Greg Peacock with two returning touchdowns here and a receiving touchdown as well.
I don't think you can trick late. Oh, yeah. This has been the half of that of the, of the year here for Glen Academy. Turnovers and everything included. All right, Coach. Well, we're going to go into halftime. But don't uh, go too far. It's going to be halftime homecoming festivities, so don't go away. 40 13s are score. None of us can see the future. But we reach towards it anyway. We might doubt whether we're good enough. Or brave enough. Or question whether we belong. But there's a place between now and the future where you realize you've always belonged. It's up here. Join, Join us. us. Rise above. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org slash summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. Boss, Jimmy John's is a problem. Where does they're using legit ingredients? High quality stuff. For a sandwich? <laughs> Premium meats. <laughs> <laughs> That's big bread. That's big Wait, what's so funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem. That's not good. Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone. At this time, we ask that you please sit back and enjoy the sounds of the 2022 Glen Academy High School homecoming festivities. Me and Coach will see you at the start of the second half. Ethnology, Interact Club, and National Honor Society. Ivan likes to run cross country and play tennis. He plans to pursue a career in medicine. Alexandra Shong is being escorted tonight by her father, Abraham Shong. Alex is currently involved in Future Business Leaders of America, Model UN, and Psychology Club. Outside of school, she loves playing the piano, shopping, and spending time with her friends. She hopes to attend UCF or UF to major in criminal justice or biochemistry and pursue medicine. Devin Javon Hall is being escorted tonight by his grandmother, Valerie Black. This year, he is graduating early in December. With that opportunity, he will be training and preparing to go to the Air Force while attending school for his commercial driver's license. Is 
Dahlia Durasim is being escorted tonight by her mother, Fida Safe. Dahlia is the president of Glen Academy's Model United Nations, co-president of Interact Club, and community service senator for student council. Outside of school, she enjoys working as a barista at Wake Up Coffee and hanging out with her friends. After high school, Dahlia plans to pursue a career in journalism. Jackson Allen Dodgen is the son of Jeff and Lena Dodgen. Jackson is being escorted tonight by his mother, Lena Dodgen. Jackson is a co-president of the Student Council and a member of the Glen Academy Drumline. He enjoys playing music, traveling, and hanging out with friends. After high school, Jackson hopes to attend UGA and pursue a degree in biomedical science. Catalina Alejandra Flores is the daughter of Karen Librand and Jorge Flores. Catalina is being escorted tonight by her father, Jorge Flores. She is the president of Glen Academy's Hispanic Organization Promoting Education Chapter, publicity senator for the Student Council, historian for National Honor Society, and the girls' varsity tennis captain. After high school, Catalina has aspirations of pursuing architecture. Edrin Davion Jackson, also known as Big Eddie, is being escorted tonight by his aunt, Kimberly Moore. Edrin plays on the Glen Academy football team and is an athlete on the track and field team. During his free time, he likes playing games, listening to music, hanging with friends, and 50 Cent Wing Wednesday. Big Eddie hopes to attend a four-year university and earn a doctorate in teaching. Annalita Esperance Hirsch is being escorted tonight by her father, Tom Hirsch. In her free time, she enjoys creating art. Annalita is an active member of DECA and the Psychology Club. She hopes to go to college for psychology or special education. Griffin Jason Lee is being escorted tonight by his mother, Rachel Lee. He is the co-president of Glen Academy's National Honor Society and is a part of Model UN and Ethnology Club. He also is on the cross country team. Griffin is planning on pursuing a career in biomedical engineering. Kaylee Jocelyn Lawrence is the daughter of Kendra and Chase Lawrence. Kaylee is being escorted tonight by her father, Chase Lawrence. She is the co-president of Student Council, an officer of Glen Academy's Model United Nations, and an editor of the Glen Academy Gazette. Kaylee likes the color orange, hanging out with her younger brothers and cousins, and her dog, Jacqueline. After high school, she plans to pursue a career in public policy and environmental law. Balber Reyes Hernandez is the son of Baldazar Reyes and Elena Hernandez. Balber is being escorted tonight by both of his parents. He hopes to attend UGA or Georgia Tech to get a master's degree in cybersecurity. Balber wants to pursue a cybersecurity job, most likely in ethical hacking in the FBI arena, build an A1, and be able to protect the new technological world. He is a part of the Glen Academy Marching Band and also a part of clubs like World Language Club and HOPE. Amaya Ladrea Mosley is being escorted by her father, Andre Mosley. When not studying, Amaya dedicates her time to helping kids in need. As an added bonus, she takes pleasure in making others laugh. Amaya hopes to study anesthesiology at Emory University. Wyatt David Wilson is being escorted by his mother, Margaret Wilson. Wyatt hopes to go to college in pursuit of a computer science degree, though what college he will attend is undecided. He is a member of several clubs on campus, including the Psychology and Remote Control Clubs, for which he curates websites. In his free time, Wyatt reads, cooks, and catches up on sleep. Emma Ruth Motos is the daughter of Jim and Morgan Motos. Emma is being escorted tonight by her father, Jim Motos. Emma hopes to attend the University of Georgia and plans on becoming a dermatologist. She is active in many clubs at Glen Academy, but spends most of her time helping with student council as the student life senator. In her free time, she enjoys dancing at Southern Strut Dance Company, working at Mio's Suite, and spending time with friends. Jack Henry Yergin is being escorted tonight by his mother, Rachel Yergin. He is a twin, the older brother by four minutes, to Oren Yergin. He is a member of Terror Buddies, has been in four Penguin Project productions, loves singing and dancing with drama buddies, and attends First Baptist Church of Brunswick. Jack loves to travel and is a Google Earth and Maps fanatic. After high school, Jack would love to work at the movies or Disney World. Oren Wayne Yergin, also known as Big O, is being escorted tonight by his mother, Rachel Yergin. He is the twin brother of Jack Yergin. 
Oren is a member of Penguins Project, Terror Buddies, Drama Buddies, and a member of First Baptist Church. He lives for sports, especially football. Oren has been the water boy for Glen Middle and is currently helping the Frederica Academy water team. After high school, Oren wants to attend the REACH program at the College of Coastal Georgia and Auburn's Eagles program. Oren would like to tell everyone, Go Tears! <laughs> Riley Madison O'Halloran is being escorted tonight by her father, John O'Halloran. Riley is a proud member of the Glen Academy Players Concert Choir, National Honor Society, Beta Club, and Student Council. Outside of school, Riley is a competitive dancer at Jill Stanford's Dance Center. After high school, she plans on pursuing a career in musical theater and is currently applying to BFA programs along the East Coast. Please join me in giving a round of applause to all of our nominees. the game but you don't love the pain from the moment an injury sidelines you turn to the experts at summit sports medicine and orthopedic surgery our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely to play your best you need to work with the best visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment Look at the big man getting homecoming king. Gotta love that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us tonight to crown the new king and queen. Please congratulate our new king and queen whenever you see them. Go Tears! And there you have it. There, yeah, there you have it. Congratulations to the homecoming king and queen of Glen Academy Red Terrors for 2022. Love to see it. Love to see the camaraderie and all the fans celebrating and giving them all the love they deserve. All right, guys, we're going to take a look here at the first half highlights here. Uh, just to start it off, we have the first uh, play here by the uh, Growtown team. First good play of the day they had here and running back making guys miss and getting good, good yardage. All right, next we have a block punt here by the Terrors. Change the momentum immediately. Put these guys in great field positions. We can go get another score. There's another score here by uh, Greg Peacock. All three of his touchdowns here. The first touchdown of the game. The pass a touchdown here. And last but not least, another touchdown here. This is the rollout pass here. Great flip over here to Hank Noonan for a touchdown. 
Glenn Academy dominated the first half, as you can see in the highlights here. Jumping over people for first downs. And the last play here is a great, great catch here in traffic. We had a lot of, we had a lot of explosives there in the first half. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. We'll come back to you very soon. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced <for> veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. the game but you don't love the pain from the moment an injury sidelines you turn to the experts at summit sports medicine and orthopedic surgery our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely to play your best you need to work with the best visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. You do it again. Oh, okay, nope. And welcome back, everyone, to the Continental Sports Network. We're glad you could join us. Congratulations to all the homecoming queen and king and court, as it has been a fantastic first half of a ball game. Glenn Academy started the fireworks off with a 99-yard touchdown return on the kickoff by Mr. Greg Peacock, who wears number one, really has been number one in this ball game tonight. And coach, I, I don't know if you're uh, Grove Town, I guess maybe uh, you say, let's keep the ball out of his hands? Uh, yes, but <laughs> I, if I'm honest, like it doesn't really matter because the coaches are dialing up a great game plan here and these kids are executing at a high level. 
if I'm the coach for Grovetown, I'm telling these guys, do not look at the scoreboard. Go out here and execute. Let's win every possession. Let's win every quarter. And we have seen Grovetown with some big plays and also some big heartache though as well. One of them being the uh, penalty flags. That really has been the Achilles heels for them so far in, the, in their offensive drives. Yeah, you can't, you can't move forward if you're always going back, you know. Uh, but I believe that these guys are going to get after it after, in the second half, rely on their passing game and let these receivers make plays. And I'm sure that uh, coach right there, Coach Evans, Corey Evans, made specific to say that during the halftime break and to get his teams back on track here in the second half. And we've seen them play uh, some spectacular offense. I mean, they had that one three-play 62-yard drive where they made that touchdown look easy. Yeah, every touchdown that Grotown has had has been very quick. I mean, um, less than two minutes per drive on each touchdown drive they've had so far. Then on the flip side, Coach, Rocky Hidalgo with some amazing plays drawn up. I mean, it's 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 like a shell game. You better follow that ball or else you're going to get lost. Yeah, the thing I'm most impressed of with Coach Hidalgo is how prepared this team is. You know that a team is well coached when they come in prepared. They do little things correct. We have a block punt. Um, we have a special teams, two special teams touchdowns, and we have a couple different interceptions as well. Great job of preparation. So with the second half action coming up here, 40-13 to, to score. We'll be right back. Don't go away. the game but you don't love the pain from the moment an injury sidelines you turn to the experts at summit sports medicine and orthopedic surgery our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely to play your best you need to work with the best visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment Welcome back, everyone. Homecoming night, 2022. Glen Academy, 40. And Grovetown High School, 13. We're glad you could join us here on the Continental Sports Network. I'm Anthony Saranon, along with Coach Andre Clinch. And Coach, uh, it's a magical night for homecoming. And especially when you're part of the student body and the student alumni. You know, I heard class of 62 was in, in the house. And I know we have some... Uh, Glen Academy graduates on the production staff as well. So the pride of Glen Academy running strong tonight. Oh, yeah. Got to love what you're seeing here. There's my boy Travis, um, Glen Academy graduate there. Uh, a lot of great friends of mine graduated from Glen Academy. Uh, great men, great leaders in the community, always doing great things. And I love to see these guys doing great. Uh, and I love to see uh, the team that's not my alma mater across town having a great homecoming night. And that they are indeed. I mean, again, they started off with that 99-yard touchdown return by Mr. Greg Peacock, and then he had another long return. It just one after the other. He is the workhorse tonight, so hopefully he got a little more extra rest with the homecoming halftime, uh, extended halftime, because he's really been the workhorse for the team. And on the flip side, though, Amari Clark, the quarterback, doing some – Nice run moves, and of course, when you think of Clark, you think of number, uh, his, the young man, number 13, Joseph Jean, who has also run the ball as well and picked up some yardage. And we're getting ready for kickoff because Grovetown elected to get, or they ended up getting the ball here in the second half with Glen Academy electing to get the ball early on. So this goes into the end zone, and so Grovetown will start the second half at their own 20-yard line. 
Yeah, here we go, man. Second half, getting started here. I hope that uh, Grove Town can put up some drives together here. Um, you want to see these guys have some confidence coming out of the second half. And we did see the frustration of the quarterback, junior quarterback Amari Clark, when they were unable to continue those drives, whether it was, you know, the unfortunate of him stumbling or the ball getting turned over. And when they finally got that touchdown on the board, the, the relief, you could see it in him that, you know, we can do this. We can get on the scoreboard. And let's see how they do it here in the second half. Going to go quickly to number 13, Joseph Jean, but putting on the stop right away there is Glenn Academy. Yeah, great job of discipline and holding your position there and making a great tackle. Longer. Starting Longer. right where we left off here in the second half. I know Coach Peter, Coach Rocky Hidalgo had said one of the three keys tonight was to keep the offense of the Warriors from making that big play. And so far, we really haven't seen a big play. I mean, they did, they did score on a touchdown on a three-play, 64-yard drive, making it look easy, but it wasn't like that typical huge play where we've come to see Glen Academy pulling out here in tonight's game. And the ball That's is a, incomplete. Yeah, unfortunately, that was a backwards pass. Backwards They're going to lose yards on that pass. Oh. Inside 15. So not a good way to start the second half here for the Warriors. Trailing 40 to 13. Four yards on the play. Third and 16. So brings up a third and long, third and 16. So they were yeah. starting off at their own 20. Now they're even deeper now. Yeah, you can tell the kids are a little bit defeated here. They got to lock in and try to execute the plays that they're given. So let's see what Coach Corey Evans and Clark pulled together here from his own 10. Goes back deep, has to hurry, has a defender on him, comes out of the pocket and is quickly tackled back about the 25, 26 yard line. That was too close for him. Yeah, that's great pursuit by Glenn Academy there and stopping him from getting the first down in that play. Great job yeah, on the first the opening drive for the Terrace. He did have a defender on his tail there. It was quickly to get out of there. So pickup of 11 wasn't enough for the first down. So fourth and five, ball spotted at the 25-yard line. And yeah, that loss of down when that ball went backwards really hurt them there. So with 10.23, the clock winding down. And this is what we've kind of seen as well, that you know the, a little delay going to get the offense started and then they get called for the delay a game so this ball is stopped at the 25 yard line and that's where Glen Academy will start off here when they come back in possession let's take a look at some of our social comments Let's go Terrors from DJ Dallas. And love to then see DJ Coach. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Love to see here's, a, here's a package here from uh, Greg Peacock having a great game here. Um, I think I think as great as his dad played, I don't know if his dad had a game like this. Two start off uh, kickoff return touchdowns and a receiving touchdown as well. Great job. And back to the DJ Dallas thing, man. Great to see him comment and tune in into these games. Um, he's been a he's been a great guy for uh, Glen, Glen County and um, did a great job at Glen Academy when he was there. Love rooting for that guy and seeing what he can do for the Seahawks. So run the play here to get a few yards on the pickup. And of course, give the ball to the workhorse number one, Greg Peacock, picked up six yards. We'll just have to give him the hashtag highlight reel for tonight. He really has made that highlight reel with some big plays. Absolutely. Absolutely. Second and four. Going to stay on the ground again. And that is to Mr. Peacock once again. Had to pick up four. And we'll see where they spot it here. 
Glad you could join us here on the Continental Sports hey, Network. Boy. Glenn Academy homecoming 2022. So no gain, third down and four here. Let's see if that Warrior defense can shut the drive down here and give them another opportunity at it on offense. Not this time. Looks like there was plenty enough to pick up the first down on that run from Mr. Peacock. And look at the intensity of Coach Rocky Hidalgo, even with a 40-13 lead. Got to love it. When you got a big lead like this, if you can just lock in, tell your offensive lineman, I need you to block with all your might, tell your running back, I need you to protect the ball, you can run the whole game out. And that's a great way to win games. Dominating even when the teams know you're going to run against them. Got to like it. You see Coach Hidalgo there. You wouldn't know if he was up 40 to 13 or not. He just has that same intensity. Got to love that. Keeper Quarterback the keeper down. on the run. But sounds like we have a flag on the field here. And there's our official for tonight. Yeah. Got yeah, a legal shift against Glenn here. You see, when they run that play, it's, it's called an old school wedge play. And when they do that, they actually go without sound most of the time. They, there's not really a, a cadence. You just get on the ball and go. It doesn't give the defense time to get ready for it, and you attack right away. So in that case, they didn't have the offense set. And that's why the flag was thrown. So it brings up a first and 15. Ball at the 30. Peacock runs it up the middle, just shy of the 35. Should be no surprise when you see the ground game. It's number one, number one, number one. Yeah, they might mix in some option here or there, but I think Coach Adoga wants to take care of the ball here on this drive. Run this clock out, protect the lead, get out of here with a win at homecoming. Back in the shotgun is quarterback Tyler Devlin. Again, looking at the sidelines there to see what coach wants to run on this offensive scheme. Go again with the run game. Taking up just shy of the 40-yard line to Greg Peacock, the running back. Sophomore 5'10". Yeah, these guys can run the clock out like this. Um, it's going to be a long game. They're going to make a long game shorter. Five-yard pickup for Greg Peacock. Brings up a third and seven. Another opportunity to see if the offense for the Warriors can stop the run here. Wow, look at the way Peacock just gets right in there. I love how he kept his legs moving there. So it was fourth and seven. Did he get enough to pick up the first down? And here's the run here. I mean, he gets it here and gets it through traffic. Three defenders on the ball, but he still pumps his legs to get those extra yards. That's a dynamic run. So he picked up five. So it'll be fourth and two for Glen Academy on homecoming night with the lead 40 to 13. And at six minutes already. And they're going to go ahead and punt the ball. And did the uh, gentleman touch the ball? It looks like he did, and running it in for the touchdown. And the official signals it there, so it obviously touched the returner. And got to give it to Glenn Academy. That's a smart play to just pick it up and run it through and play until you hear a whistle. That was Marshawn Turner. All right, here's a here's another look at that muff punt. He he wasted a fair catch here, settles under it, but the ball touches his hand there, and that's all you're gonna get there. Uh, you're not gonna get a touchdown here because once the muff punt happens, you get the ball where you pick it up. So that's why it's not a that's not actually a touchdown. But that is a turnover and another terrorist first down. And they get it right there in deep territory. So it was a fourth down situation, turns into a first and 10. Let's see where they'll spot the ball at. And again, Coach Hidalgo mentioning special teams is important. And it really is amazing to see how Coach Hidalgo just instills 
that. Special teams is just as important as offense and defense. On the flip side, Coach Corey Evans just trying to get that first win, and unfortunately, unless things change, we'll have to wait till next week. Yeah, this team is locked in. I mean, Coach has got these guys locked in, playing great ball, getting after it, and it looks like, you know, Grove Towns is not helping by making the mistakes they're making as well. So quarterback keeper on the run, picked up a couple. Brings up second and eight. They are inside the 20 yard line, knocking at the door and Glen Academy's really been capitalizing mm. on those mistakes made by Grovetown and the one handed grab was not able to be held on by the ball there by Mr. Hank Noonan. Yeah, here's a rollout here. Quick power pass and Looks like he got a little bit high on that throw, a little bit of a difficult catch for Hank Noonan there. But great play call. Guy was wide open. You just got to make the play. The ball at the 17-yard line. And Glenn Academy will get another opportunity here on third and eight. Anytime the Warriors made them a mistake, Glenn Academy would always capitalize on it. We'll see here. We'll give the run ball to Greg Peacock. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think he got the first down there. Let's see if they go with a field goal here or they go for it or fourth down here. This brings up fourth and four. Let's see if Cody Arnold comes in to attempt the field goal. Or as you said, why not just go for it? And there is Greg Peacock coming off the sidelines there. Get a little bit of a break. And looks like they do have Cody Arnold out on the field to kick this field goal. Would be a 30-yard field goal. Team leading 40-13 to 13 with 5.08 remaining here in the third quarter. Kick is up, mm. and it looks like it's wide left. So it still remains 40 to 13. As the young man, Cody Arnold, the senior, tries to go for that 30 yard field goal. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go away. It's homecoming here on CSN. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and for <sliced> veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone. First play from Amari Clark with the run. Coach, let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah, just a quarterback uh, power there to the right. He gets as much as he can and a great tackle there in the open field by the cornerback. Just shy of the 30-yard line with Grovetown trailing 40-13, to 13, second and one. And Clark running the ball up the middle, picks up a few more yards after the... Initial push, picks up the first down, and a nice run there by the junior quarterback. Yeah, it's a, the quarterback run is a big part of the offense here for Grove Town. They want to get the quarterback as many chances as they can to get the ball in the open field and make plays with his feet. That's a great tackle there by my, my man, Lil Tank. Brings up a fresh set of downs, first and 10. And the run and check out the quick shirt tackled to slow the run down. Good team effort there. The big swarm by the black jerseys there making a play. 
carry was by number 13, Joseph Jean. The flag on the field here stops play with 3.43 remaining in the third quarter. And there's our official with the pink wristbands, the pink whistle. Yeah, we got a false start there by the offense. Again, Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in the month of October. So we're seeing the pink socks, pink arm sleeves, gloves. And with 3.30, clock winding down, second and 11. Going to go with a pass play. Shoot that pass right up the middle and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, A.J. Jackson. He quickly got rid of the pass right up the middle, but receiver unable to handle the pass. Yeah, we got a, a receiver coming on the crosser here. Quarterback drops back and tries to put it in there for him, and he just didn't watch it in. Trailing 40 to 13. Sure, Coach Corey Evans would love to have that play back again. The junior quarterback has to scramble. And he is just going to get stacked right there. And with that big hit, number 87 for Lynn Academy. Yeah, quarterback tries to get outside of the pocket there, but great job getting off the block and making yeah. a play one-on-one -on -one oh, in the backfield. Number 87 is Jack Cheatman. Puts on the hit. So brings up fourth Three and 11. So... A three-yard loss, fourth and 14. So just as we thought the Warriors would be able to capitalize on Glenn Academy's inability to score there, but their drive itself stalls. They'll have to go in for the kick. And this was going to bounce out of bounds, so Glenn Academy will take over on downs here, leading 40 to 13 with 227 remaining in the third quarter. Here on homecoming night, glad you could join us. I'm Anthony Serenana along with Coach Andre Clinch. And Coach, seems like after the first half and all that excitement, so far, really at the second half, things have kind of calmed down a little more. Yeah, it looks like uh, Glen Academy has taken all the wind out of the sails for Grovetown. Um, big lead, they're running the ball, they're imposing their will. Very difficult to come back from that. So utilizing clock management for Glen Academy to just keep the clock running and with 2.22 with the run play. Greg Peacock with the run. And I think you and I are in agreement, Coach. Player of the game tonight would go to that young man. Uh, yes, I don't think it's even close. Uh, I mean, two kickoff return touchdowns alone is enough, but I mean, He's doing it all. So second and eight. Again, Peacock for the run. Gets a pass midfield and into Warrior territory. Helmet came off, though. Hey, helmet comes off, so he's got to come out of the game for at least one play. Here's a run here. Follows his lead blockers, gets as much as he can, keeps his legs moving, but at the end of the play, his helmet comes off there. Sure, Coach Corey Evans would, is, not, is not worried about that. Let him come out for one play. That's good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Coach Evans doesn't want him in the game anymore at all. I mean, these guys having a game. Let's see what Coach Dow's up here, though. So third and four. And go with another run play. Devlin on the carry. And flag down. That was the quarterback, Tyler Devlin. But another flag on the field. Yeah, that's another go false start Glenn here by Academy. Yeah, another false start by the, the Terriers there. Devlin's got to do a better job of getting everybody set once somebody comes out of the game. But other than that, I mean, this guy is leading his team to victory in a beautiful way. So a little over a minute remaining here in the third quarter. And definitely you can, you can tell the pace of the game, Coach, with the with just with the run 
the run and pound of Glen Academy. It has taken a lot of minutes off of the seven. clock. We're almost wrapping up here with 102 remaining. Here in the third quarter, the clock winding down. And there's uh, number seven right next to the quarterback, Hank Noonan. Let's see if they uh, dial up his number here on this play. And run this one to about the 50 yard line, but gets pushed back. And here's a young man that carried the ball. We haven't really called out his name tonight. Number 23, DJ Baldwin, sophomore. Yeah, it's good to see DJ get the, get the game and make a play here. You see they follow right behind Hank and try to get some yards there, but the pursuit of the uh, Grove Town guys and the Warriors, they do a great job there. Four or five guys over there making the tackle. So with 14 seconds remaining, the clock winding down, I think Glen Academy is just going to let time tick away. We're down to six seconds. Coach Rocky Hidalgo and his team will go into the fourth quarter leading 40 to 13. And he called a timeout. Yeah, Thought we were going to let it roll Rocky, down to zero. Yeah, I'm not sure why Rocky called a timeout. I'm sure he has a reason for it. But uh, we got one more second before the fourth quarter. Probably set up the uh, punt team here and make sure they're ready to go. So with fourth and six, one tick remaining on the clock. Coach Hidalgo with the timeout. Maybe he wants to get the kickoff in time or the punt in time to end the quarter and start with a fresh clock here in the fourth. But 40 to 13 is a score. Homecoming night. The student body is enjoying tonight's festivities. Great halftime show, great show on the field. And of course, the big homecoming dance weekend as well. Now, I know you played in your homecoming, Coach, but did you go to your homecoming dance? Yes, uh, I went to the dance. I made an appearance, but I didn't stay very long. My mom was pretty uh, strict back in the day. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off the fourth quarter. Coming back here shortly. Don't go away. Order to 13 to score here on CSN. as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced <for> veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone. Fresh set of downs here for Grove Town as Glen Academy kicked off a punt to end the third quarter. Glad you could join us. I'm Anthony Serenon along with Coach Andre Clinch. Coach, we've seen a good game tonight so far, and uh, only one thing missing throughout the night tonight. No mention of uh, Patrick Mahomes on the mic tonight. Yeah, I think um, maybe. Um, people have stopped noticing that we sound similar, so. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna ask you to give us your breakdown of last week's victory for the Kansas City Chiefs. A little short pass completed to number 13, Joseph Jean. Get shy of the marker there. Yeah, another great shoestring tackle there by Hank Newton. And yeah, I, 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 yeah, I just got to say, Hank Noonan, is, uh, he's a team guy. I mean, he makes all the plays on both sides of the ball. He leads um, the team in blocking. He goes back to middle linebacker, does a great job tackling, and he also has a touchdown catch as well. And you mentioned his name to Coach. Coach has nothing but positive and great things to say about his number seven there. No, I believe so third it. I mean, and 11. 
Gives some time for Clark to throw the pass, but unable to, to make the grab there is A.J. Jackson, number five. Yeah, that's great coverage there by Glenn Academy. Dropping back into a, a situation where they can catch everything in front of them and uh, not able to execute is uh, Grovetown there on that play. So just as quick as we saw the offense come on the field, now it looks like they'll be getting ready to kick a punt here and the defense will be getting back on the field here for Grovetown. Trailing 40 to 13. And back to kick is number 12, Zayden Gunn. He's a senior. And in the backfield you saw there was number 24. That was Jaden Ellis. This ball is gonna hit the ground and be down on the turf there at the 40 yard line. So good field position for Glenn Academy as it's a 40 of the Warriors side of the field. Yeah, another, another opportunity for the Glenn Academy Red Terrors to be in field position where they can go and score again. I think this is the point in the game where you're starting to see some of these new guys who haven't really been playing a lot this game get in the game. So first and 10, ball at the 40. And go to the run play. So this time it went to number 24, Jaden Ellis, the junior. Yeah, you see the, you see the number two running back getting in the game. And he wants to make a play. That's what you want to see from the young guys getting in the game. Give him a chance to make a play, let him see what he can do. So Jaden Ellis, the junior, as you mentioned, coming in now to give number one Greg Peacock a break here with the lead 40 to 13. And go with the run play this time. Well, it's not much of a break there because there he was right there again. Number one, Greg Peacock. Yeah, Greg's had a crazy game. I mean, right here you see him get the ball in the jet sweep, get outside, just outrun other guys and just make the play. Another first down for Greg Peacock. A new set of downs for Glenn Academy. Nine yard run. So it'll be first and 10 for Glenn Academy. And they're just knocking on the door again. From the 28 yard line. Devlin with the pass in the air, into the end zone, it's caught. And look who it is, number two. David Prince, the junior wide receiver. 28 yard touchdown pass from Devlin to Prince. It's a 46 to 13 ball game now. Yeah, Prince is a special receiver. Great talent, great body control. Uh, the safety looks like he lost the ball there, but Prince makes a great catch. You see Devlin drop back for the pass here. Let's it go just over the safety's head. He's looking at the receiver, not looking at the ball, but the receiver makes a great play. Prince, again, second touchdown of the day. So the extra point kick is blocked by the Warriors. So the score remains 46 to 13. We'll come back. Don't go away. You're on CSN. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. And welcome back everyone to the CSN 
I'm Anthony Serenon along with Coach Andre Clinch. 46 to 13. The kickoff was in the end zone for the touchdown. 9:58 remaining in the ball game. So with the lead, 46 to 13, Glen Academy would improve their record overall to four and four and get to 500. Which I know Coach Hidalgo had mentioned in his podcast. That's what they really were shooting for to get themselves back to 500. And for Grovetown, unfortunately, they're still looking for that first league or region victory. The record would go to three and five. Quarterback keeper runs this one just shy of the 30, or did he actually get to the 30? If he did, it'll be a first down there. That's where the marker is at. I believe he did. Yeah, you see the quarterback get outside here. Get everything he could and fell forward just enough to be right at the first down mark. So it brings a new set of downs, first and 10. And again, Coach Rocky Hidalgo said about this Grovetown team is that one of the main keys would be to keep that offense from exploding to having those big plays. And I would say they did that rather well tonight. Absolutely. They kept the quarterback in check. Um, as far as he's willing to take these guys, that's how far they're going to go. And he's been limited tonight. And a nice run by the quarterback. Another key that Coach Hidalgo mentioned as well was play great in special teams. I guess you could check that one off the list as well tonight too. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you want to be picky, we missed a couple kicks, but uh, two kickoff returns and a block punt. I mean, that's that's a great day. And then the other third, one of the, 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 the full three. We're going to take a quick break though. 46-13 is the score. Don't go away. Homecoming night here on CSN. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. And welcome back. So we had a little time out here to have the player assisted off the field. Looks like they're going to be okay there. So we'll get play started off. But we were talking about the checklist of the keys to the game for Coach Hidalgo coming into it. And uh, he said, keep Grovetown from having explosive offense, which they've done. Play great special teams, what they have already. And then the third one was run the football, get explosive. Well, I think they've done that as well, too. So three for three. And go for the run play for Grovetown. Just shy of midfield. I guess Coach Hidalgo knows his teams. Because those three keys, we do those, we'll come away with right. the victory. And yeah, they are. Yeah, that shows me that there's a lot of buy-in from this team. They really believe in their coach. And the coach believes in them. Um, you'd love to see that. That's what it's all about. A lot of growth happening with these young men. And a great job by Coach Hidalgo by getting this team ready. So new set of downs, first and 10 after that nine-yard run. And here are the Warriors with a run up the middle. That's quarterback keeper Amari Clark. And I think with both teams just running the ball, we're going to see this clock wind down pretty quick. I believe the Warriors get into Glen Academy territory at second and one. After this week, Coach, cannot believe it. Only two more weeks left in the season for regular play. In and out of the hands. Pass was intended to number seven, Cardell Rudolph, unable to hold on to the ball. Yeah, you got to watch it all the way in there. Warriors look a little bit down and defeated. 
you hate to see it here. You see the quarterback drop back and just give it right to the guy. And maybe it's a little bit too hard. Maybe I don't know, but you got to execute down the stretch. You can't worry about getting on the bus before the game's over. You got to go out and execute no matter what the score is. Lining up right next to Clark is Cardell Rudolph again. And Clark going to run the ball. Picked up a, maybe a yard or two. But what we started this season, Coach, with the our first telecast, getting ready almost to do uh, another game next week and the one the following, and that's it for the 2022 regular season. Yeah, these seasons go by fast, but it's been fun. I've really enjoyed calling these games and watching these great teams from Glen County get out in the field, on the turf, and make great plays. Seven minutes remaining, a little over seven. Going to fly this one in the air. And to the left side, incomplete pass. As that was throw out, thrown well of, of, above and beyond the intended receiver for number 16, Lathan Mitchell. So brings up second and 10. Quarterback Clark scrambles and gets pushed out of bounds on that run play there. He'll stop the clock. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not really getting, uh, as the quarterback rolls out here, he's not really getting anything downfield that looks good. And he's just trying to get whatever he can. That's partially great defense by the Terrors. I mean, nobody's getting behind these guys. They're keeping everything in front of them, playing the zone, and making sure that clock keeps running as much as possible. Clark going to go back. Let's see. It's time to pass. Breaks through one tackle. Going to run to the right side and tries to extend. Let's see. He was out of bounds a few yards yeah. prior to that. Yeah, I think he stepped out before he took the dive there. So it's going to be fourth down coming up. So looking at the rest of the region, coach, in tonight, coming in tonight, Effingham County, record of 5-2 and two overall, 3-0 and oh in region play. And then you have the Brunswick Pirates, who are 7-0 and oh overall, 3-0 and oh in league play, or region play, followed by Lakeside, Evans, Glen Academy, and South Effingham. And as we mentioned, uh, just with a few more weeks in there, Brunswick with the bye week this week, so they'll go back into next week with their record 7-0. On the line here is trying to go for a perfect year. Nice spin That's move nice there spin by move the there quarterback. By wow, he's got a lot wow. of uh, extra yardage. <laughs> wow. What a flag. This is a great play by Clark here. He's, he's uh, up the field and makes a great spin move to make Hank miss there and then gets as much as he can after. Great play. So the official again with the earpiece said he's probably waiting for New York to give him the call, but oh, yeah, they went against Glen Academy and uh, he's using the special flag tonight, the pink flag. So not a yellow flag tonight, coach. Yeah, they're going all in on Breast Cancer Awareness Month and, you know, it's really good to see, honestly. You know, I love that the community comes together all over each county, each city, all over the states and countries and, you know, all over the country representing with all the pink on, everybody knows him, has uh, been there. connected to somebody who's had to deal with that terrible illness. Now you see the wrists around the, or the wristband look like they've got it around the shoulders there and the socks we saw early on. So with that penalty, it brings it a fourth and three with 6.39 remaining. I believe somebody utilized a timeout here. And 
Coach Hidalgo and his team trying to get that victory to get to 500. And Coach Evans and his team looking to get that first region win. And uh, unfortunately, looks like they're gonna have to wait till next week. And Coach Evans, you mentioned in his second year coaching, prior to that, he was the defensive coordinator for the team. And so, not look very pleased and happy with the outcome, obviously, trailing 46 to 13. There's the fourth and three situation for Glen Academy with 639 remaining in the game. Homecoming night, 2022. And Glen Academy putting on a nice show for the, the crowd and for all the alum that are here tonight. And we're glad you could join us here on the Continental Sports Network. I'm Anthony Starinano along with Coach Andre Clinch. And for all of our crew tonight, providing us these beautiful images, the replays, the sights and sounds. Definitely an award-winning group tonight here. So fourth and 16. 624, clock winding down. Clark has to scramble, short little pass, and was intended for number seven, Cardell Rudolph. And that's incomplete, so the ball will get turned over on downs, go back to Glen Academy. Yeah, another great stop by the Glen Academy Red Terrors. These guys are locked in tonight. Um, love what I'm seeing from the city. Uh, these guys from Brunswick, Georgia, are doing a great job out here working with these young men. These young men are out here executing very well. Great support by the community as well. Where else do you get uh, a stadium like this, um, support like this, even the live coverage now that we're getting from CSN? Uh, great community effort, and I love to see this from our, my hometown. Really proud of everybody involved. So Glenn Academy going to utilize the run game here with six minutes remaining just to utilize all the time on the clock here. As you mentioned, uh, you saw there earlier, Coach Rocky Hidalgo in his ninth year coaching. First down to the first down 49. Here's a quick replay of the young guy getting the carry here, falling forward. That's all you can ask for. The homecoming king is in the game. That's a big man. Look at him move up to the next level, use his hands very well there. Love to see it. Nice run there by Glenn Academy. Oh, there you go, number 70. And he is in here and going to make his presence be known. He can't help but make his presence be known. That's a big gentleman. Love to see him getting after it, using it, moving his feet very well. It's not easy to come out that stance when you're that big. He's doing a great job out there, and I love to see him out there on the homecoming court, winning that homecoming king as well. Brings in third and six. Ball in the ball here. Number 70 is King Edrin Jackson. Coach, would you believe it? He is a sophomore. Uh, I believe it if you say six, it's true. Six but I don't five. Think a, I don't think he's a sophomore if he's a homecoming king, though. So. Six five. And the, as far as uh, the weight that is put on here in, in, in Max Preps, 355 pounds. Okay. Um, wow. I, I got nothing else. That's just wow. And he definitely has provided a lot of coverage there in this defensive or offensive push here. Moving around, getting the counterpart on the other side of the ball. And again, if you're 
a Glenn Academy fan, just like these, the student section is. You have a lot to cheer for, 46 to 13 to score. And it's not hard to cheer tonight, with that type of score tonight. And again, we heard uh, class of 1962 was in the house. So with 416 remaining, 46 to 13 the score, fourth and three. And going for the punt. Good hang time. And so Grovetown will take over the ball inside the 15 with four minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the game. I'm sure tomorrow, Coach, after uh, they meet for practice, Coach Rocky Hidalgo and his team, when they watch the video, are going to see a lot of positives coming out of this ball game. Oh, these are the weeks that you love watching film. And you, normally, you want to um, watch film and learn from your mistakes and go to the doctor, as they call it, see what you did wrong so you can be better next week. But this week, they get to watch some amazing highlights of them being great and executing their jobs and everybody getting to see great results. So after last week's victory, tonight they'll go and 2-0 and for the last two weeks. Big hit, new quarterback in the game. That's number three, Jaden Howard. Let's watch this one more time, guys. Young quarterback in there, getting as many yards as he can, spins around and runs right into a big hit there from the safety. Number eight, Ryan Young for Glenn Academy. We have some movement at the line. And now, now not only to reflect the pink flag from the officials, but check that out, Coach Dre, even the production crew getting us the pink flag icon as well. See, I told you, award winning right there. Oh, no question. Every we little detail. Have, we definitely have one of the best crews I've ever uh, been around. These guys are professionals on top of it. Love working with these young men. Even Travis. <laughs> you have the handoff to run the ball up to the 30 yard line, push further for some more. Wow, I think he picked up the first down. Cardell Rudolph with the run. Rudolph the ball carrier. Picks up first down yardage to the 35. This is a great job by him making a guy miss and just keeping his legs moving. Carrying the guy in the black shirt with him for the first down. First and 10. Ball at the 35. Let's see if we got some forward progress on that as well for being pulled back. The 240, clock winding down. Yeah, you're four, no. you're 39, second down, six. Another good run by the quarterback there. Get as much as he can before he runs into some big black jerseys there. Second and six. Little issue with the exchange, but wow, really finding a hole and going up the middle and getting the first down and some more is the quarterback, Jaden Howard, sophomore quarterback. I love the heart that I'm seeing from Jaden. I think he's going to be a player. Right side, Stops he took it. His leg. He's a tough kid. So first and 10, less than two minutes remaining in the game. Let's see if Quarterback Jaden Howard can move them closer to get the touchdown here with 46 13 the score. Always want to add more points on the board, and as former coach would say, make it respectable. Yeah, I, I, I like what I'm seeing from the quarterback here again. He's leading this team sophomore. That means the future is going to be bright again for the Grove Town yeah, High School the Warriors. Uh, he embodies what the mascot's about. He's a warrior. Look at his heart. Uh, smaller guy's stature, but big in heart. Love to see that from this guy. Sophomore quarterback in now. 
as we saw Mari Clark most of the game tonight. And stop with the run there, number seven, Cardell Rudolph. Putting on that hit there, number 14, William Tankersley. Yeah, William is a, a good kid. I'm a, I know his family very well, known him my whole life. Proud to see him out here making plays. Oh, John, it's on the way. Third down. So 45 seconds remaining, third and six. Glenn Academy putting on a clinic tonight. Offense, defense, wow, what a Ooh. big hit. Number nine, David Smiley in for the big quarterback sack. Hey, quarterback never saw him coming, came off his blind side, made a great tackle. Great timing on that blitz for number nine. Mr. Smiley. Eight seconds remaining in the ball game. Let's see if Grovetown just lets time expire without going away with a play here. And that's exactly what happened. So 46 to 13, big homecoming victory for Glenn Academy 2022. Coach Rocky Hidalgo, his team, student body, fans all go home happy tonight, Coach. Yeah, great game from the Lynn Academy Red Terrace. This is how you celebrate homecoming. You get out here and you dominate from the first kick. Love to see it. Very proud of the Terrace. And you should be too if you're one of these alumni from Lynn Academy. Greg Peacock, our player of the game, our game ball recipient, he was the workhorse tonight. Yeah, some nights you just have it. And he had a great night. Uh, All-purpose yards, got to be well over 300 yards. Great game from the young man. And again, talking about the offense, the defense, everything in line for Glenn Academy tonight to pick up the victory on homecoming. Puts their record at 500. And next week, they come in riding with a two-game win streak. And for Grovetown, looking for that first victory in region play next week. But... Again, what a great game tonight for homecoming 2022. The student body, everyone loving it. 46 to 13, the final score for all of our crew here. I'm Anthony Saradona for Coach Clinch. We'd like to see you next week. Hope to see you soon here on the CSN Network. Good night, everyone.